I had no idea what to expect before I went on this trip. I expected that I would see some difficult things, and I did. Um, I didn't expect to be so touched emotionally, and I was. I think a common stereotype that I don't think I'm the only one that wrestles with it. Um, but the common stereotype is that they're poor and not just like, oh, like the poor orphans or the poor people, but like, oh, like those poor people. Um, and we forget that they're people with their own ideas and ways of doing things. And the biggest thing that surprises me about these kids is they're, they're always um, like any other kid. They're a kid. They're not a weird kid. <laughs> they're not a poor kid. They're just a kid. Um, and when you tear everything away, that's probably the biggest thing that just kind of um, causes me to, to stop and think, you know, like, well, you know, some of us get a wrong idea. Um, you know, we think that being poor somehow damages you um, emotionally or mentally or something like that. Um, and these are just the greatest kids and I always want to have fun. I guess the most surprising thing for me is just the level of joy that's there. Uh, amidst so much suffering and so much hardship. I mean, they live a life that I've never even come close to. You know, I used to, I used to like to think that I suffered so much in my life because I, I didn't have a cell phone until I went into high school. You know, things like that. And you go down there and, and there's so much suffering and there's so much poverty and... I mean, they should... They should, no one should ever have to live such a hard life, but they do, and they do it with such joy. It's always hard to sit here and be like, you know, and to think, you know, why did you put such beautiful people in such a bad situation? Some of these kids have seen things that we will never see, we will never know. Sometimes I think that the kids in the orphanage are fortunate to be in an orphanage in Tijuana. And that is probably one of the most troubling things, is that um, the rest of Tijuana is not, is, is, is in, you know, some instances better conditions and in most cases much worse conditions. I was amazed at how open and friendly and happy they all seemed to be, even though, you know, the conditions that they live in are not ideal. The kids are just so full of life. It's so cool to see how happy the kids are, even though they are living in some of the worst conditions possible. It's kind of like we just pick up right, right where we left off last time. Um, that meaning that uh, they're still in a, they're always in a playful mood. mood. They're never, um, they're never not willing to have fun. I mean, if you just look at the kids, I mean, they're so happy. I mean, of course they have things they deal with, but considering the circumstances, and they're just so, the kids and everyone are so appreciative of everything that we do. Love's addicting. You know, the first time I went down there, I fell completely in love, like, with the culture, with the people, with the adults that are there, with Sister Fonsera, Madre, and with the kids. I did not know that I could, that I could love a perfect stranger so much. There are an endless number of ways you can help with Capstone. Um, the, the biggest one is by simply giving money and simply being here and eating crap. Um, you're giving money that is going to be directly used to hopefully better the lives of children in Tijuana. 
and you can't really ask for much more than that. Come on a mission, man. Come on a mission. We can do it. Like, I guarantee you. Anyone can go on a mission. Forever